my name is Bella Hardy. I am a folk singer and I am in Yorkshire somewhere near some trees. If somebody could send help, that would be really good. They've locked the doors. I have to write songs about war and peace. It's actually, it's kind of an amazing archive that's been collected in Doncaster, the Doncaster uh, 1914 to 1918 project. Um, the Doncaster Museum have been working hard for many years now, for four years, to collect together lots of different stories of people from the area to get a kind of more thorough idea of what was going on in Doncaster rather than general World War One stories to actually nail it down to people and lives and things that relate to families that are still there and people's stories carrying on and continuing. So that's been really interesting to get dug into those and had a tour around the museum. We've been to Cusworth Hall, had a little nosy around. And myself and Finley Napier and Greg Russell have been here for a few days writing songs about what we've found and what we know and what we're learning. And it's really heavy duty. <laughs> it's really miserable. We keep watching really miserable documentaries, um, which are, it, it is great. Um, but war, war is bad. War is bad, people. War is bad. It's, yeah, it's never easy to write songs about. Really, just lots of notes. The old notebook. So I had this with me when you see him. Um, and you just, everything you hear, everything that starts to tweak and everything you watch in documentaries and everything, you know, that you read, you start to try and make notes, try and make notes. And then it's a case of coming back. You know, it was a month ago I went to Doncaster. And then come back and you start circling and highlighting the things that are jumping out and the stories that you've remembered and the stories that really have stuck with you. And that way you end up with kind of the tales that are embedded somehow. Um, and I've, there were three, um, the first was really about, well there was a title on one of the boards at the museum that was The Bells of the Brickfield and I thought well that's a song title without even doing any work, which is very useful. Um, and it's about the women in uh, the war and stepping into men's roles. So I started looking into that, but I discovered all sorts about uh, brickyard workers actually being largely women, especially down in the black country before that. So brickyard working and the brickfields were a women dominated role anyway, quite often. When the men came back from war, the men needed work, women were put out of roles not only that they'd stepped into, but also roles they'd already been doing. So I've, I've written a song called The Bells of the Brickfield, which is a little bit about that. And I have written a song, well, I've started a song for Miss Hooper, teacher, uh, which I'm going to be working with Finlay, because he's also written a song for Miss Hooper, or started one. So we'll have a little amalgamation. Um, she was a dance teacher in Doncaster, uh, actually later on through the Second World War. First World War, she was just a child performer, not just, but she was a child performer. She was 14 and she was out raising money for troops and performing in hospitals and in a dance troupe called the Nobodies, which is pretty cool. Uh, and I've written a song actually inspired by one of the silk postcards in the museum, um, which really stuck in my brain. It's got three purple violets on it and the postcard says, I think of you. And there's all these beautiful silk postcards. So I wrote a, a rather melancholy song for that one, I'm afraid. Um, and I've just been, yeah, working away on my fiddles, getting the boys to play guitar for me. It's always really useful to have other humans playing music around you because when you're in your own house by yourself, it's really easy to get tempted away by other jobs you have to do, by admin, by house stuff, by anything else, by the telly. Um, but when there's other people around who are on the same project as you, then you, you do bounce off each other straight away and that's great. So you can... You know, there's somebody playing a song upstairs and it just rattles down through this ceiling and there's somebody else in the next room trying to, you know, well, singing away and it, it's, yeah, it motivates you and it drives you on and you bounce ideas off each other and it's a really big topic. Like it's, and the archives, they've done such a great job on this project that the material that they've gathered is ginormous amounts. Like it's a colossal input of information and trying to pick places to start can feel overwhelming because there's you feel you're drawn to so many things that you really have to go okay let's just pinpoint some places and try and make go small to to build up um but yeah there's so much there and also just the subject matter being so colossally overwhelming that you can easily go down a rabbit hole 
and end up completely shattered by the subject matter. Um, because there was a definitely a sense this project is about war and peace and you know those the times that followed the First World War rather than just about the wartime experiences. And there's certainly a really huge sense of uncertainty that seemed to follow the First World War, with men being sent home but still on, I think they call it Second Reserve or Second Division, you know, they could be called back out at any time. Um, the actual peace treaties weren't signed till June, the year after the armistice, and men were arriving home and there was no work, and people didn't talk about it, there was a huge lack of well-being consideration going on so there's it's um it's quite daunting it's quite a huge amount of uncertainty that you kind of are going through to work out these songs so it it's oh, that's the trouble that's the tricky stuff just getting to play with these guys it's kind of awesome um i was sat just with greg last night drinking a beer and playing around some of the songs we'd written and it was a great joy and it was Greg's birthday, so that was nice. Um, yeah, getting to getting to have the time to dedicate to researching the stories is always just amazingly freeing because quite often you're working in between lots of other stuff happening. So that's a great joy. Um, and yeah, just getting to work with these guys. When the peace bells were rung, when the flag waving finished, when the men came back home, I was out of a job. Forced back to domesticity, shunted to poverty. They said a woman's days laboring are over. The Doncaster papers didn't hide their disdain. This was just one more role conquered by the fair sex. But we've been ruling the brickyards for a hundred plus years. But now the men need the work, so that's over. But we toiled as hard, and our hours were as long. And our hands are as calloused, our backs beggared and bent. We were meant for us finest, the bells of the brickfield. They say a woman's days working are over. There was a queen at the working, each brick carefully crafted. While her pages around fetched and carried the clay, caked from headscarf to boots, gender unrecognizable. And from seven years old, a girl learned her life trade. We were sacked or took wage cuts, demoted and shoved out. How they laughed when we said, equal work, equal pay. We were cherished when needed, then cursed out like old newspapers. Because a woman in man's work's not welcome. But we toiled as hard, and our hours were as long. And our hands are as callous, our backs beggared and bent. We were met for his finest, the bells of the brick field. They say a woman's day's working are over. They've banned women's football, it's far too unsuitable. We can build ammunition, but we can't kick a ball. Though we had 50 or thousand spectators at Goodison. It seems a woman's day is sporting our over. So our war isn't done. We're still fighting for change. In a hundred years' time, surely sense will prevail. There'll be perfect equality, no pay gap disparity. 
and the fight for our rights will be over because we toil as hard and our hours are as long and our hands are as callous our backs beggared and bent we were menstruous finest the bells of the brick field they say a woman's day They say a woman's day's working are